In the matter of the change of name from to Sarah Eleanor Fragon, from the application of the matter named above, the court finds good and sufficient reason exists for a change of name. It is therefore ordered that the name of the party shall be changed. Clerk of the Superior Court, County. Hello everyone, I am now officially Sarah and here today to tell you about the story behind changing my legal name in the state of North Carolina. One of the more tedious parts of transition is the legal side of things. Updating your legal name, your legal sex, and getting all of the associated forms, identifications, and paperwork associated with them. This side of my transition began in the spring of 2021 when I started seeing my new endocrinologist. She offered me several packets of legal documents and paperwork to be filled out that, while they wouldn't be required for her services as an endo, were helpful in getting the legal processes started. As a matter of fact, around that time, I was able to change my legal sex on my driver's license. As it turns out, this is significantly easier in the state of North Carolina than it is to change your name. Um, as a matter of fact, the DMV form, which I'll link below, so if you need, you can download it and get it, simply requires a $15 filing fee and for the papers to be signed by one of your doctors. That's it. That's all it takes to change the sex on your driver's license. This being a considerably easy step, I managed to knock it out in the span of maybe a month. The most inconvenient part was just going to the DMV, which is going to be a recurring theme in this video but I digress. It was quite fortunate timing on this regard, as in spring and summer 2021, I moved out into my new place and was going to have to get a new license anyway. After all, having moved and changing address, you have about 30 days to go to the DMV and update that, otherwise your license is no longer valid. So while I was taking care of that, we also updated my legal sex with the form provided and took a new photograph. There was only one thing missing though, and that was the fact that my legal name at the time, my dead name, was still listed on the license, in conflict with all of the rest of the information on there that had been updated and corrected. Oh my goodness, it is storming outside. I hope you all like rain sounds. Anyhow, the more difficult part of this whole experience was the legal name change. I began this process in November 2021 and completed it this past month, June 2022. Eight months. Legally changing your name in the state of North Carolina is not easy or quick or simple or terribly effective. Stop it! Or terribly inexpensive. It's not the most fun process, but let me walk you through a few of the steps so you get an idea. While I did have all the forms and paperwork already provided by my doctor, I was kind of feeling anxious and insecure about my ability to handle all this on my own, especially with so much other life stuff going on. I just, it was a lot and I didn't want to put that extra pressure on myself, so I just went and hired a lawyer. In reality, literally any lawyer will do. They're just going to be filing forms and paperwork for you anyway, so they're just going to be passing it off to their assistant. This is kind of a nothing job for them. So, don't pay a lot of money. You can see anybody you want. Maybe just that little bit of help will go a long way in your legal name change, and really any other legal paperwork -y kind of matters that aren't going to involve you actually stepping foot in a courthouse. So the first thing I had to do is go and get fingerprinted at the sheriff's office. Um, this didn't take too terribly long, though I did have to make an appointment and wait about a week, and there was a fee of maybe 15 to $20 in there. That's the thing with this whole process. Every step has fees ranging anywhere between 15, 20 bucks and in the case of the FBI, a hundred bucks. But anyway, I had to go get fingerprinted, make an appointment, wait a week or two. It was not terribly convenient, but eh, it was doable. So I got two copies of my fingerprints on, on like an official document. 
that I took with me, handed off to my lawyer, and those two were sent out to the FBI and the SBI for them to do background checks and confirm that I am not a criminal or unscrupulous sort or on a government watch list or something wild like that. Obviously not. I am a normy, normal member of society who does not get up to any sort of trouble. Or at least I would like to say that I am, so... There shouldn't have been any trouble there. And there wasn't. But it took a solid 14 weeks for the FBI to get back to me. 14 weeks. That's... Hold on, how many months is that? Three and a half months. My God, what the hell, FBI? Well, I did never confirm to see whether or not this would work, I did half consider going and buying a gun, literally just so that they would be required to do a background check on me faster than the amount of time that I had been waiting. I forget exactly how long the deadline is for background checks on purchasing firearms, but it's not 14 weeks. So I never had to resort to that myself, but if you're having trouble, maybe ask that lawyer that you hired and see what they have to say on the matter. And please comment below. I am very curious to see if that would have worked or not. Following the background checks, we moved on to step number three. Affidavits of good character. Yet another stupid bureaucratic hoop they make us jump through. And I personally believe this is for reasons I'll get into later. I was required to submit two notarized Affidavits of good character, signed off on by people who live in my county, but are not related to me, stating that I, Sarah, am a normal, well-adjusted, well-behaved person. In this regard, I got really, really lucky. Despite working in the county next to the one that I live in, two of my bosses are from the same county that I am, much to my surprise. And beyond that, one of the ladies in the department next to ours happens to be a notary in her spare time. So one day at work, while I was on my lunch break, me and my two bosses took over both of the forms. They signed off saying that yes, I am a good person and I'm not a troublemaker or anything like that. We signed off on those forms. This lady from the other department notarized them on the spot and I took those and handed them into my lawyer as well. Moving on to step number four was filing forms. Fortunately, I didn't really have to do any of this myself, though I did have to go to my lawyer's office several times to sign off on paperwork that was going to be notarized and they needed my physical presence and physical signature on the paper. I couldn't just scan it in and email it. This was quite frustrating because it was a 45 minute drive each way to and from my lawyer's office because I got somebody who worked in the city, whereas not quite where I live. So every time I had to go see them in person, there was a bit of an errand. And that ended up being probably five times over the course of this whole process. It's not their fault, of course. I was referred to this person, and they did a fine job, especially considering this was not something they normally did, but they did well. I'm fairly satisfied. Um, for sake of not doxing anyone, I won't say who it was, though. Shit. I am really glad I am in here and not out there. Damn. <laughs> oh my god. Anyhow, this step of the process, filing all the forms and papers with the courthouse, wasn't really my responsibility. I just had to make sure that they had all of the forms and then my lawyer's assistant did it on our behalf. Um, so it wasn't really too much I needed to do, besides sit there and wait. Again, a lot of waiting was involved in this process. So finally, after six months of waiting, I finally received the word from my lawyer's office that the county had approved my name change. They even included a copy of the court order that I was able to look at and confirm. 
This was very exciting, but I was not provided very good instructions on how to proceed moving forward. Yes, I was legally Sarah, but what do I do to make that tangible? How do I get my IDs, my papers? How do I make this happen? I was told, sit and wait for six months, and eventually you'll get your new birth certificate. Seeing as how it has not been six months since I was issued my legal change of name in April, you can probably guess that that is not what I did. So we are now on step number five, getting your own new IDs. This was challenging mainly because I had no guidance. No one told me how to do this. I just sort of stumbled around until I figured it out. The first part of this was, of course, getting a physical copy of the court order. I'd just been sent a scan of a photocopy of it before, and that doesn't count. So I called up the Department of Records at the courthouse with the number of my document, asking, is there any way I can get a copy of this? And much to my surprise, yes, there was. And it was not difficult at all. They were like, can you give us like an hour and it'll be $3? And I'm like, this is the easiest part of this entire process so far. Yes, I can. Thank you. And just as they said, I waited about an hour, went down to the courthouse, walked in, gave them $3. They gave me a copy of the form stamped with the official seal that this was a official certified copy of the document. And now it was time to return to the DMV. This was not particularly fun, especially because my local DMV is very crowded, very understaffed, and does not have a large waiting room, which means sitting in the hot car for hours waiting to be called. At the end of a three hour wait, I was brought into the building, presented the form and was told, no, you can't have a new license yet. It doesn't match your social security. Of course, I wouldn't have known to do this. I was not giving instruction proceeding forward. And while, yes, I was disappointed that I did not get my new driver's license that day, they did give me very clear directions on how to go to the Social Security office and update that. So pro tip for you all, once you get your hands on your physical copy of your court order, which you can do as soon as it is issued, don't wait for two months like I did, like a goober, take it, go down to any Social Security office. Obviously, it doesn't have to be the one from the county you were born in, or the town you're from, or anything like that. It being a national system, you can walk into any location in the entire country. And while it does have some DMV vibes, it's a lot less busy and it moved a lot more quickly. I was waiting for maybe 30 minutes with several people in front of me. So I walked in, I presented the court order in my old driver's license, and they went ahead and got it fixed. It took just a few minutes. The man at the counter was extremely pleasant to work with and very sweet and i'm so thankful for him and that day while yes i spent hours waiting the dmv for no reason i did get my social security card or it was updated in the system that day i got my card in the mail a few days later but it was done as far as social security was concerned i was sarah there as well the following week as you can imagine involved even more DMV shenanigans. As soon as I had a free day, because once you've updated your name in the social security system, you're good to go 24 hours later to get a new license. So I went right on back and I waited and I waited and I waited. And three and a half hours later, they were nowhere near close to seeing me. It was hot outside that day. I was stuck sitting in the car again. It was miserable. I was tired. And it would have been hours more before I would have been seen. So disheartened, I just had to give up and go home. That was a real blow. Because it had gone so well the last two times I'd gone to the DMV, I didn't have an issue getting in. And now here I am, not even a week later, struggling just to get a spot in the line to be seen that day. What the heck? Nobody likes a five, six, seven hour long wait. So I gave up and the following day, I 
went and drove out of town two to three times as far away to a different location. And while that one was extraordinarily busy, it also was fully staffed and I was indeed able to get seen. And as of last Wednesday, I managed to snag a copy of my new driver's license with my new name on it. Of course, I do still only have the paper one. I'm still waiting for the real one to come in the mail, which should occur fairly soon. They said within two weeks. So within about a week of this video going live, I should have my new driver's license in hand. Yay! Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. All of the bullshit hoops I had to jump through, we did it. We did it, girls. We finally made it. I am here with a new ID. So what's next going forward? Over the course of the next month or two, I'm going to be updating all of my non-governmenty type accounts, things like at the bank, all of my doctor's offices, contacting the college to get a new diploma, all of those sorts of things. That's a lot of updating to be done sort of along the lines of when I moved. I had to reach out to every single financial, educational, and health facility that I had any ties to and update them with my new address. Now I'm gonna have to do the exact same thing again, just with my legal name. It is a bit of a pain, but to be honest, the good feeling you get of finally getting stuff fixed like this is more than worth it. And this is not going to be nearly the bureaucratic nightmare I had getting the name changed to begin with. This is small potatoes, and I'm honestly looking forward to getting it fixed every year. Another big one I really do need to get done, and intend to soon, is updating my passport. Because as you can imagine, the information on there is quite out of date. I had a passport as early as 2010, and unfortunately, the timing was pretty bad that I updated my passport in 2019. Not even a year before my egg cracked and this whole transition journey began. So my current passport is probably not even usable as you couldn't identify that as being me and it doesn't match my legal name. So I'm going to have to go get a new one. And I suppose the very last step of this whole process is the birth certificate. Which, as far as I can tell, there's nothing more to be done. Before going down to the courthouse, I tried repeatedly for several weeks to call the Office of Records of the state, to call the Office of Records in my home state, and they are unreachable. And I mean that very literally. They do not have email addresses, they do not have a way to contact them online, and while they have a sprawling automated phone network, no one answered the phones, and their voicemail box is full. So it is quite literally impossible to reach out to these people and get any information. I would have heard back from them by now if it were possible, but all I can do now is sit and wait. That being said, I feel like at this stage, the birth certificate is not as important as the rest. Yes, it would be nice to have. No, I do not use it in my day-to-day -day life. I don't think I've ever come across a situation where I needed my birth certificate outside of getting things like a passport or driver's licenses or other IDs. So there's not that much utility to it. It's just one of those I would really like to have one. So I'm going to just sit and wait and it's going to randomly show up in the mail one day and that'll be that. That'll be the final step, and there won't be a single document out there left saying that I am anyone other than who I really am. And I look forward to that day. So, what are my opinions on this whole process? I feel like it was not great, but it could have been worse. North Carolina is certainly not the most progressive state, but it's certainly a lot more progressive than a lot of its neighbors. And fortunately, that makes this process, while not easy, doable. And I'm going to be very blunt. I entirely believe that the reason that getting your legal name changed is as difficult as it is, 
is sheer transphobia. There is no other justification. It shouldn't be this difficult. I shouldn't have to get background check after background check, run through all sorts of legislative processes. That's, it, overkill does not describe how out of control and unnecessary this entire process is. And I'm not really a fan of the reasons why this is being done to us. It's at this point, Maybe this wasn't always the case, but in the current year, 2022, the only reason getting your legal name changed is as difficult as it is, is to discriminate against transgender folks. That's it. That's the only reason why. If your state has such laws, you should be voting in favor of candidates who support more progressive ideology and make changes that can tangibly affect and improve the lives of people like me because I feel like a second-class citizen in my own country not being treated with the same dignity and respect that other citizens are and honestly I think it's shameful well that's all for today for any of you out there who are going to be going through this process yourselves down below I'm going to link some forums and documents and resources that can help you out the way that I was helped out on my own name change process. And hopefully things will go even more smoothly for you than they did for me. So that's all for today. I'll see you all next time. Bye. Damn, looking at rain out there.